Katrina here, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve for eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors. Make sure to watch to the end of the video to see how the solution plays out, and please subscribe for more videos. So we're going to start off by looking for eigenvalues. In my previous video, I give a bit of an explanation behind what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. So we're going to just dive right into an example today so that we can see this in action. So we are looking for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a 2x2 two two matrix A, which its first row has entries 4 and 2, and its second row has entries 1 and 3. So let's go through all the steps we need. So to begin with, we're going to look for the eigenvalues. So that step one is finding the eigenvalues of this matrix A. And in order to find the eigenvalues, as part of our step one, we need to look for the characteristic polynomial. So that is crucial. Characteristic polynomial. <laughs> Long word. So this helps us find our eigenvalues, which we're essentially treating as roots in this problem. So the characteristic equation is written out as the determinant of a minus lambda i equals to zero. So let's take a second and break this down. So a, remember this is our n by n square matrix. Lambda is our eigenvalues, which are scalars. So they, they show how um, a linear transformation scales a vector. And then lastly, our i is our identity matrix. And recall that identity matrix just has ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Okay, and then the determinant is the operation that we need to perform. I show how to calculate the determinant on 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three matrices in my previous videos, so please be sure to check those out to get a detailed step-by-step -step way how to calculate these determinants. And we know that the, re the um, result of a determinant is also going to be a scalar value. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at this. So we have set up our characteristic polynomial. So now as our step two is we're going to actually go ahead and calculate the determinant. So step one, characteristic polynomial. Step two is calculate the determinant. Okay, so since this is a two by two matrix, this is actually a decently easy um, determinant for us to calculate. So say, for example, we'll just give you a bit of a background. If we have some matrix A that's written out as A, B, C, D. The determinant of this two by two matrix we write kind of absolute value lines over it, and it is equal to AD minus BC. That's all. So let's go ahead and apply this to our matrix A. So before we take that determinant, we need to set up what is our A minus lambda I. Okay, so now we take our matrix A, and since I is identity matrix, we can simply take our values that we have in A, so we have 4, 2, 1, and 3, and then our diagonal values, we subtract lambda. Okay, so we have to make sure we do that because that encapsulates this minus lambda i right over there. So now that we've set up this matrix, now let's go ahead and take its determinant. So we're going to go ahead and do that together. So we'll change this to our absolute value lines for the determinant. So following our AD minus BC rule, we get 4 minus lambda multiplied by 3 minus lambda, and we're subtracting 2 times 1. So here we get 12 minus 3 lambda minus 4 lambda plus lambda squared and we can't forget this part over here, which is minus 2. So if we simplify this, we will get lambda squared, and then we have minus 7 lambda plus 10. 
Okay, so now we have our characteristic polynomial. So now what we have to do is we want to go ahead to our step three and we want to solve for lambda. And lambda is our eigenvalues. Okay, so in order to do this, we have to set our equation equal to zero. So what we have now is our lambda squared minus seven, seven lambda plus 10 equals to zero. This is a trinomial, so we have to go ahead and factor it. So it often comes back to factoring. So I have tons of videos on factoring. Be sure to check out the factor playlist that I have linked in my description below. So here we can see that we can use the product and sum rule. So we have a product of 10 and sum of negative 7. So what two numbers multiply to 10 and also add to negative 7? Hmm. Well, let's see. What about negative 5 and negative 2? That works. And since our leading coefficient is 1, we can go ahead and factor this immediately. So that means that we get lambda minus 5 and lambda minus 2 equals to 0. So we're going to set each of these individual terms equal to 0 <clears throat> to solve for our lambda values. That means that lambda 1 equals to 5 and lambda 2 equals to 2. Great, so now we've solved the first part of our problem. So we've found the eigenvalues. So again, these are the eigenvalues. So from here, the next step of the problem is we want to find what are the corresponding eigenvectors to these eigenvalues. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we have the eigenvector eigenvalue equation. So that's written as matrix A multiplied by eigenvector V equals to lambda, our eigenvalue, times V. So this is, again, eigenvector eigenvalue equation. So make sure that you write down this guy right over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rearrange this equation. So we're going to, we want it to be set to zero. So we're first going to bring over <clears throat> our term to this side of the equation. So now we have an equation that is zero on the right hand side. From here, we can see that we have this eigenvector twice. So that means that it can be factored out of our equation. So now we have a minus lambda multiplied by our eigenvector equals to zero. So we're going to set up some equations here and so that we can find the corresponding eigenvector for each of our eigenvalues. So we'll set up the generic form first. So let's write out this right over here. So again, we have our a, so a minus lambda, which is our 4 minus lambda, and 2, and then 1 and 3 minus lambda. And then we're going to multiply that by our eigenvector v and set that equal to 0. Now we're going to have to divide this problem into 2 to solve for each of our eigenvalues. So let's start with finding the corresponding eigenvector for our eigenvalue 1 which is our larger one, which equals 2, 5. So now what we have to do is we're just simply going to plug in that value of 5 for both of our eigenvalues. So let's see what we get there. We get 4 minus 5, 1, and then 2, and then 3 minus 5. And then now I'm going to rewrite this vector v um, in a different notation so that I can see its terms. So we'll call this v1 and v2. And we're going to set this equal to 0. The next thing we want to do is we want to solve this homogeneous system and get the solution for the eigenspace. So first of all, we'll continue to simplify this because we want to solve this system of equations. So now we have negative 1, 2, 1 and negative 2 multiplied by v1, v2, 
equals two zero. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do matrix multiplications. So in order for this matrix multiplication to work, our number of columns has to equal the number of rows. So we can see that in our first term over here, we have two columns and we have two rows over here. So that means that the matrix multiplication will be valid. So let's go ahead and do that so that we can write out our system of equations. So following that, we will have negative V1 um, plus 2V2 equals to 0. And then we are going to have our V1 and then negative 2V2 equals to 0. So we've converted this into a linear system of equations. So we want to find a V1 and V2 such that this holds true. So there can be more than one answer, but in this case, we can see there is a pretty simple one where if we have V1 equals to one and V2 equals to, oh sorry, the other way around, V1 equals to two, and v2 equals to 1 because then we would have negative 2 plus 2 which equals to 0 and we'd have over here 2 minus 2 which equals to 0. So these two values work. So that means that our eigenvector, so we're going to call this our v, that is going to be equal to 2, 1. And in particular, we can write the eigenspace. So let's take a look at what that means. So we have this eigenvector. I'm going to put a little 5 here because this corresponds to the eigenvalue that has a value of 5. So then we can also write E5, which is our eigenspace. And this equals to the span of our eigenvector. Okay, so this eigenspace we said is then one dimensional, it's 1D because it possesses a single basis vector. So this one vector spans the eigenspace, okay, for that particular eigenvalue. Amazing, so now we're going to repeat the same process but for our second eigenvalue. So now we have our second eigenvalue which equals to 2. So let's go ahead and repeat all the same steps that we did previously, but for this one. So we're going to write out our matrix A minus our lambda. So we have 4 minus 2, 2, then we have 1, and then 3 minus 2. And then we're going to multiply this by our eigenvector. We're just going to call the terms again v1 and v2, and then we set this equal to 0. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So we get negative 2, 2, 1, and um, 1. And then our v1, v2, and that equals to 0. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We see that the number of um, columns equals to the number of rows, so we can perform our multiplication. So here we get negative 2 v1 plus 2 v2 equals to 0. And then we get that v1 plus v2 equals to 0. So what two numbers satisfy this? So 1 and negative 1 work, because then we'd end up with 2 minus 2, which is 0, and 1 minus 1, which equals to 0. So these two values satisfy our equation. Okay, so then that means that our eigenvector, and we're going to write a sub 2 here because this is the one corresponding to our eigenvalue. This equals to 1, negative 1. So then if we want to look at our eigenspace, that means our eigenspace corresponding to our eigenvector of value 2 is equal to the span of 1 and negative 1. Okay? And again, we have a space that's one-dimensional because it possesses one singular basis vector. 
So I just want to um, give a remark that there are some cases where we may have identical eigenvalues and the eigenspace then might have more than one direction. But in the, uh, the problem I showed you today, I showed you for a two by two matrix, um, a solution that has two eigenvalues and each of these eigenvalues have one corresponding eigenvector. So this is the process, how to find your eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors. And remember, there's many applications in PCA, which is principal component analysis and dimensionality reduction, as the largest eigenvalue corresponds to the eigenvector, which encapsulates the most variation in the data. And it is known as the principal component. So please drop a comment if you want to learn more about that topic, and I'd be happy to make a video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more fun and easy to follow math videos. I look forward to seeing you next time.